Almost certainly everybody who's run one of these army trucks is uh, going to run into that bad boy taking a dumper on you. That's the shutter stat or the, the fan actuator switch. And they uh, get bad inside and they start to leak. Um, they can leak in two ways. They can start leaking and venting out of right here, just pissing away your air pressure, causing your pump to run all the time. Or they can leak internally and lock your fan up all the time which is uh, that's what mine was doing. And to buy an exact replacement is like 200 some odd bucks. But I found this one, which is the proper you know, internal application. It is a little different. Uh, first off, it's a little longer. So uh, we'll have to see if I can, you know, if it'll screw in without hitting inside. Uh, the water jacket and if it won't I'll have to come up with a, a small spacer for it and then the uh, inlet ports on the end rather than straight up so you'll have to get one of these now that's not true you could just get a regular street 90 and a street 90 is a 90 that has male threads on one side and female threads on the other side get a regular street 90 which should be dirt cheap and then screw your piece in you know, right there. Other than that, um, it will it will work. I mean, it, I might have to space it out, sure, but it will work. This one is a 185 degree fan actuator. Mine was a 190. It's going to mean my fan's going to come on a little earlier. I certainly don't need that. Not out here in Montana, anyways. But that's life, and I imagine uh, if you called the company with, uh, you know, I want this in a 190, they'd have it for you. I actually think you might be able to unscrew, then switch the probes. But unless I'm dealt a hand of total failure, I'm not going to mess with that. Anyways, the ordering information is uh, down in the video description where I got it from and the price. And I think it was like, it's like a hundred bucks delivered. So 50% off. But first, Let's see if they're going to fit in there. All right. So when it comes to is it going to fit in there, the answer is a yes. It's going to fit just fine. you got this big, long pocket to go into. Will it clear so you don't have to take the hoses off? Yeah, that's, that answer is no. This is the new vent port. This one right here, it's a, a screened plug, which is the equivalent of that small hole vent right there. Unless you want to pull the hose off, that is going to have to come out of it. I'll do it really carefully, make sure things don't come jumping out of there. But it looks like after you do that, you will be able to screw this thing in properly. When you screw it in, you have to screw it from that surface not this surface because you know that that unscrews and so if you use this to torque this whole thing in you, you're gonna never get it back apart so uh, you use those face those faces right there but yeah it looks like if I pull these caps out and that off it'll go in just fine it unscrews easily enough and uh, there's nothing that comes leaping out of there. There's that screen in the bottom of it. One thing I just noticed is that when I have it in place, however, that uh, vent port's going to be straight up. Not not a fan of that. That's that's potentially going to put some water in your your fan unit. Now, it looks to me like I'll have enough room to take the uh, output air and do it from the top yeah I should be able to do it from the top which means uh, I can place it so that that vent port goes down and I would recommend doing that I don't see anything but bad stuff from having that vent port straight up where it can collect water coming through your radiator on a rainy day nope um, that is not big open and hollow. There's actually a fin right in the center of it. 
and this being one inch longer than the other one it means that it hits that fin so um, you know you can just get like one thread but uh, all sorts of really bad things are going to happen obviously if you try to tighten that up in there so I've got to get a spacer to space this thing out one inch and that'll just be uh, run into the hardware store get a one inch coupling um, with a female end on it and a male end on it probably have to be um, two fittings in order to do that and then that'll move that back it'll probably actually move it back an inch and a half not an inch but you know what that's still going to be just fine and dandy there won't be any problems with that uh, the only the only side effects I could see would be having it a little farther back maybe it thinks the motor is a touch colder than it is but considering this is a, a 185 instead of a 190 it's, it's still gonna be fine it's gonna be totally totally fine so I had to go get that well this is what we worked out it's not necessarily the most elegant of solutions and I would much prefer if these were all brass number one if they're all brass they'd be so much smaller than they are in the galvanized but working with a small real hardware store uh, you do what you can so that is a one half inch pipe union and a half inch pipe nipple Okay, so when they screw in there. Now when they're screwed together, it's going to mean this thing is going to probably stick out oh, half inch or so into the water jacket, which should be fine. Um, I'm not totally thrilled with that because uh, You know, you're going to get some crap built in around that. Uh, over time, basically these things are going to fuse together, kind of thing. Should get all the air out of it, that shouldn't be a real problem at all. But anyways, that, uh, that'll screw in there and basically this will, I mean the first one lasted for 30 years. If this one lasts for 10, we're golden and I'll do it again next time. So. Let's get it back together, get her bled, get her fired up. Here we are, and it's a little convoluted, but I have it set in such a way that uh, hoses don't rub on anything. I was absolutely right that this one would not be long enough unless I put a 90 on it, and even then, it's tight, but uh, I think that's fine. I did have to take the uh, radiator hose off in order to get it. Look at that corrosion. I converted over to that red, you know, commercial truck antifreeze. But uh, here's hoping my cylinder liners don't look like that, huh? It sucked to lose another truck to cylinder liner corrosion. So I'm gonna get her back together, get her topped off, fire it up, and see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. Built up air pressure, the fan would slowly engage, sort of halfway. And here we are, all the way up to full air pressure, no leaking. Um, you know, I don't know if it comes on yet. Quite frankly, Montana, it's what? It's maybe 70 degrees out here. I don't, I don't know if I can get the truck at idle anyways warm enough to trigger the fan. I won't know that till I drive home. But it seems to be working okay. I have the block heater running. I was able to get the block up to 160 and that didn't trigger the fan. So I think it's fine. You know, it's nice that it's not lock solid. It's what I've been used to. We'll see what my air pressure does. 
I'm at like 130 right now and just shut it down because this was the main source of all my air leaks too. So we'll see. She's totally pressure washed off, ready to take it home for the, the winter. And gonna run it in the homecoming parade. We're gonna put a prom queen candidate on the hood. I don't know how the boy's gonna get her down, but it'll be impressive.